Welcome to Second Life. Today we're going to be doing some helicopter flying. I'm over here at the Shergood shop in Second Life. There you go. And uh, I'm going to be trying out this demo here. It's the Chinook CH-47. So let's go ahead and uh, res this bad boy. There we go. I'm a little laggy here because there's a lot of lag in the sim, but uh, uh, and there's somebody over there taxiing. Yeah, I'm just gonna wait until the uh, texture here loads in before hopping in. Yeah, you know what? Heck, I'm just gonna go ahead and hop in. Might as well. And I'm going to go ahead and take off my uh, AO there. You know, I might have to do this again, so I'm going to stand up and just res another. I forgot to take my AO off when I did that, so i got to walk like a duck. Yeah, here we go. Resing again. Check my cache on my computer is remembering. I do need to get some more RAM, but whatever. Alright. Everything in. Cool. So, I have flown this thing a bunch of times, so I'm just going to go through my normal startup procedure. Turn the battery on here. Go ahead and switch the APU, which is the old. The Auxiliary power unit to run, and then I'm going to push start to start it. You'll hear it winding up. Once it winds up all the way, you can release. There we go, releasing. Now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and set up the controls here to how I like it. I'll go ahead and turn this on. You know, I'm going to leave that off. And I'm going to put that on. Console, no, I don't need that. This, yes. That, that, that. Alright. Now, just so we're playing it safe, I'm going to go ahead and turn on the uh, lights on the helicopter. That way I am visible to other pilots. I should turn them on. I should be flashing out here. Yep, there's the green light, back light, red light, one on top flashing. Yep, alright, cool. Alrighty. So now I'm going to go ahead and get the fuel going here. Turn on the two primary fuel pumps on the uh, left side. Open the cross feed that way both engines can actually get fuel. I'm going to set this to ground for both engines. I'm going to go ahead and flip this on. Now we have power going to the helicopter. And we're going to turn these on. Wait for these lights to go out down here. I think they already did. It's pretty fast. Make sure the uh, parking brake is set. Go ahead and kick. This is all for hydraulics. These switches that I'm using. There they go. They went out. Cool, cool. I'm going to go ahead and turn on some more hydraulic stuff here. This is for the power steering. Appears the power steering should have been in the off position, but it was already on, so now it's on. And those lights should have gone out too by now. It appears so because we have just. Gen 1, Gen 2, which are the generators for the engine. 
and oil pressure lights, APU is running, parking brake is on, everything is looking good. Let's go ahead and check our fuel here. That looks good. That was main. Main was running good. Forward. Uh, let's go to the other one. There's six tanks on here. Uh, appear to be good. The other main tank. The aft tank. Alright, cool. Put this back on. Main over here. Go ahead and do a oil test. Yeah, that gauge is working. That's working. What about the aft? And it's working. What about our fire extinguishers? Yeah, that seems to be working. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and start squawking here. Let's go to sit standby. Uh, well, here's the number I should be using. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's do... There we go. We'll add 22 in there. <clears throat> Alrighty. Go ahead and switch that over to normal. We are now transponding. Over here, let's turn this gauge on. There we go, that's better. And just for the hell of it on the uh, code pilot side, since I don't have one, do it too, because I just like everything to be lit up. Alright. Starting power at 100%. That's good. Just double checking. Let's go ahead and fire this bad boy up. There we go. And down here, let's look at our gauges. Wait until the uh, oil pressure here goes up. Actually, that's oil temperature. This is oil pressure right here. Pressure is building up. Oil temperature is going up. It's warming up. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and fire engine number two now. goes engine number two. You know what? I need to grab the HUD for this thing. Except. to uh, visually res in. Hopefully it does. There it goes. Uh, that's where I want it. Alright. Cool, cool, cool. So everything is running now. Let's go ahead and turn on the generator so it's producing its own power here. Let's go over here and turn on the anti-ice. And let's go ahead and get a little bit gangster. Let's go to uh, the ramp. Let's turn that on. The ramp is now on. 
put it on emergency so I don't have to walk back there and let's just lower the ramp. While we're back here, let's go ahead and close this up. actually control the ramp from back there so I just need to click this up once that way the crew has control if there was crew back here they'd be able to use this right here and stop yeah it looks good enough that's high enough off the ground I like to have the back open just in case I gotta do an emergency get the hell out of here because I just crashed. Alright, so let's go ahead and bring the helicopter controls to flight. I'm not gonna adjust the, uh, the pedals and all that stuff. I know they work. It's a computer game. There's never a failure or issue in that, so... But in real life, you should. You can look at the RPMs here. You can see the. Uh, I'll go ahead and come down here. So you can see we're there. All right, that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the power down because we're not lifting anything heavy, so I don't need all the power. So I'm gonna turn it down to 97%. There we go. That's good. I'm going to go ahead and finish turning on the other pumps. Turning that on. Closing the cross feed. Those lights went out. Good. And that is on. Go ahead and turn this off here. We don't need the APU anymore. The helicopter is now running on itself. There should be no lights other than the parking brake on here, so we're good. I'm going to go ahead and take off the parking brake and adjust my camera angle here. It's a little too uh, move in view. It's a little too close for me. I like to be out a little bit more. Out right about there. There we go. Let's see my hand. Cool. Flying time. Raising up on the collective. Alright, I'm gonna bring her back down. Don't wanna take off yet. I'm gonna push the side click forward. Get her rolling. Because I don't wanna get too close to that building. We are awfully close. Get a little bit more power there. That seems like a good spot. Let's stop it right here. Lower the collective. Let's do a little bit of trim adjusting here. Go ahead and run this on manual. And There, that's good. Just trimming up the, uh, the flight characteristic. Actually, I can go a little bit more on the rear. There we go. I like that. Alright, so let's go ahead and take off now. Before my demo time runs out. And we are airborne. 
We are going to hover. And that is exactly why I wanted to move forward a bit, because uh, that hangar is awfully close. Let's go ahead and move forward. We're going to hover forward a little bit here. Just gently going to. I also play here with my pedals, get ourselves straightened out. Let's go ahead and move her. bring her to a stop. There we go. And let's increase collective and get out of the ground effect and go into an in-air hover. There we go. And softly rotate the pedals. Aim her out to sea. That's where we're going to fly because I want to get the hell out of this uh, laggy sim here. There we go. Seems high enough. Let's level her out. Alright, there. Alright, let's fly. Yeehaw. I'm a crazy son of a bitch. in the way of the gauges. <clears throat> Alright, we're flying. We are flying the freaking Chinook helicopter. Let's see how far I can go before... Uh, let me turn my radar on so I can see where I'm going. How far until we hit a bad sim and I crash and I have to restart my game and end the video? So far right now it seems pretty good. I shall make it a quick video. Go back and land it. But yeah, you can see it's uh, not laggy out here. It's pretty smooth. Just on that sim with all the other helicopters and stuff, there's a lot of lag from all the vehicles in there. But this is actually quite rather nice. It's like a F-14 over there or an F-15 parked off to our side. Sim cross here. I'm just gonna stay in this view so my camera don't get all crazy. Let's go ahead and do a little tactical maneuvering here. We're going to fly back. Now we're going to fly low. We're going to go up to the water. Avoid that island. It's in front of us there. power here. Drop power. We're only 33 meters above the water. Let me zoom out so you can see. So yeah, I'm pretty close. We can get closer. Uh, before we do that, I can go ahead and flying this thing. All right. Let's take her back in. There's a carrier right there off to the side. Could do a carrier landing. 
I don't know if that's a private sim or not, but it could be somebody's. This is public, however. Line up on the runway. Bring her down. Wow, that was a lot of lag on that sim crossing, and let's stall her out. Gently bring her down. Swing it this way a little bit. There we go. And let's turn. That's a uh, touchdown. There we go. the lines a little more power a little faster I can maybe I don't want to go faster it's kind of laggy sim crossing lost sound there for a second by the way, Second Life is a game that everything here is made by the creators and users, so somebody took a lot of time and effort to make this helicopter. By the way, it's a her. It would be Kelly Shergood. That's her name. I met her before. Nice lady. Real pilot in real life, too. And also computer programmer. So she took the time to actually put this into Second Life. And I would say she did a fantastic job of reproducing the Chinook C-47D variant. This would be the D variant, not the Foxtrot. That's why it has the old school gauges, because it is the older Chinook, not the new one. There we go. Pull forward. Can't go too forward, because... The blades on this helicopter are pretty big, so I probably want to go just past this little X here on the ground. And lower collective and stop. The parking brake on. Put the side click in the neutral position. Which is a pain in the ass with the lag in here right now. It was nice though out there on the ocean. Not close enough. All right, let's go ahead and do our shutdown procedure. Go ahead and fire up the APU again. There we go. Turn the auxiliary power back on. And let's go ahead and drop this into idle or ground. Awesome. Let's go ahead and start shutting off unnecessary electronics. As in the anti-ice, we are no longer taxiing or anything. We are parked so we can turn off the lights on the helicopter. We can go ahead and turn off some of these fuel pumps. Open the cross feed, turn off the other side, just leaving the two running. 
And now we have a two minute cooldown period before shutting off the helicopter. So it's at 11, so when this says 13, I'll go ahead and shut off the helicopter. I like how it has a little clock inside. It's actually uh, the same time in real life too, if you live in California. The Pacific, US Pacific time. There's 12, one more minute. barely even touch the fuel on this thing. This thing can fly for like five freaking hours. Uh, I guess while we're waiting I could show you while it's cooling off. To refuel it you can either refuel it by opening each individual gas caps or you can do it the pro way which would be to open this up and before you even do that, what you'd want to do is go back to the cockpit here. You go right here to where it says uh, refueling status. You go ahead and put that into refueling mode. And over here, pop that lid off so you can refuel. And you turn every switch on here. See how the fuel indicator shows? And then you open every port, that way the fuel can go to all the fuel tanks. There's six fuel tanks on this dead boy. And uh, that's how you have to refuel it. And then you also have the selector switch here. You can check you know, all the tanks to see what they are. You can also put it on total. To see everything as one. So yeah, that's how you would refuel this helicopter. Turn that off. Close that. The refueling station, which is not resting in because I have to get closer, would be this guy right here. So there's two kinds of fuel you have the AV gas, and then you have res in here for me. This would be the jet fuel if it reses. Come on, res, res. We'll say JP5. Just trust me, it says JP5. That'd be the field that you use for the shipment because it's a turbine engine, so basically a jet engine. You don't want to put add gas in this, you'd, you'd kill it. Alright, this should be long enough now. Let's go ahead and start turning this down. So, we'll go ahead and shut her down. We'll go ahead and start with the power steering here. We're going to start turning these off. Turn these off, and then uh, you can come over here to the gens. Turn Gen 2 off, Gen 1 off. Doesn't matter in what order you turn it off, as long as you turn it off. And then you come up here, the fuel pumps. Well, it's not running anymore, so we don't need them. Turn those off. You can close the cross feed, and uh, you can turn off the lights on on this. You don't really need to. And then we have to freaking wait until the rotor stops spinning. We can go ahead and stop squawking though. Go ahead and turn this off. Alright, and by the way, this right here, this is to do like a flight plan. You can actually put in your waypoints and all that stuff. And you can actually do autopilot and all that cool stuff. Autopilot would be... the hell's the out? Oh, oh, there it is. I was going to say, there it is. So yeah, autopilot, basically what you'd want to do is put it on both, and then you can pick uh, right here, and it'll put it into autopilot. And then as you're flying, you know, you can start setting your, like, your stuff. It's complicated. I just like to fly manually. But basically what you do once you have your thing programmed to where it flies, 
all you gotta do is like get into speed and then you just click this this and once you have these three clicked it's flying by itself in auto and this button here would be for auto hover in case you just want to sit there and hover without doing nothing all right this blade stopped not yet That back on when I get out of the helicopter. Not there would be a little glitch. It doesn't do that in real life, but since it's a game, it's got to go back to its neutral position, which is what it's trying to do right now. And there it is. Blades are a dead stop. So now we can go ahead and kill power. for it to spin down there we go and turn off power on the battery and that's it that's pretty much it uh, you can also do maintenance on this too like you can open up the compartment for the ah shit demo ran out kicked me out anyways but yeah you can do maintenance on it. you can do the oil and all that cool stuff she did a really detailed job on it that was pretty awesome. Let me go ahead and take this off. I don't need that. And I'll put this back on. Yeah, my dude don't look dumb. He actually has like an animation to it. There we go. Alright, so yeah. You guys enjoyed that video. Later.